The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. <laughs> I like my headset. I can hear it. You can hear it. Okay, good. That's great. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Ashida Andre, the host of Phenomenal Women, and I have my co-host with me. Hello, it's Tara Johnson again. Happy to be here with you. I am so excited about today's show because we have a phenomenal woman that's with us today, and I can't wait to get into her projects. I can't wait to get into her business. Mm -hmm. Her name is Fawn Weaver, and she is the founder of Happy Wives Club. Yay! Because we're happy. We're not married, but we're, we're happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts there, right? Right, right. It starts, right. Right. It starts with us. It absolutely yes. starts there. <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Thank you so Thank much you. for being with us. And Thank explain you. to us what inspired you to start this. What inspired me is that man right there that no one can see. Oh. oh. See, and we got the camera on you. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. He won't kill us. He won't kill us. But what, what started it is, I was at the time, I was a hotel general manager. And, you know, you have some challenging days when that's your job. And I had a really challenging day. And what I did is what I always do if I have a really tough time. I, I called him and I said, I need a frozen yogurt date. And he works, I don't know, 40 40 miles away. He got in his car, no questions asked, because he knows I would not call him and say, I need you right now if I didn't. Didn't need to ask a question, got in the car, came, picked me up. We went for our frozen yogurt date. And as we were walking along the promenade, I was sharing with him the frustration of the day I had had. And and long story short, I found out that w one of my team members had lied to me. And it, and it was tough. So we, we were walking along and I'm listening to him and talking to him and he's holding my hand and he's making me feel just as he always has it supported. And I look over at the bookstore and in the, what do you call it, just in the front of it, there was a book and I can't remember what that book was, but it was like one of the many books that basically tell you marriage is a ball and chain, right? Mm. And I looked at that and then I considered the day that I had and who I called the moment that happened. And I look at him and I look at that and, and out of nowhere, I literally just go on a rant in the <laughs> middle of, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a good thing. <laughs> was not a good thing. I'm like, what is it with everyone with this whole marriage? And why does everyone, it's either the desperate housewives or it's the real housewives or it's this or that. And like, that is not what marriage looks like. And why is that all we see? Right. And so as we kept walking, I turned to him. I'm like, I know what. I am going to start a club for women like me who have awesome men, who love being married, who really, really enjoy this. And then we kept walking and we just kept talking. I was like, ah, I know. I'm gonna call it the Happy Wives Club. And then this man <laughs> falls out laughing because it's a corny name. I mean, right. let, let's be clear. It's a, it's, a, it's a corny name, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wanted something that represented women who were strong and but still had figured out how to balance this thing called life and being happy in marriage and happy outside of it. So you guys were married during this time. Oh yeah, but we had been married at that point seven years. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did you guys meet? His mom. His mom. <laughs> His really? Mom. <laughs> okay, mom, if you're watching. Ah! Yes. I've been holding out. I thought about it. <laughs> but now I'm asking. His, His mother. Really? His mother. She had been doing one of my closest girlfriend's hair for 15 years. She's a hairdresser. She was. And my girlfriend had been going to her for all these years, and I needed to get my hair done, and my hairdresser wasn't available. So I went to his mother, and, and she was good. And so I went back again, and I went back again. And every time I'd go, I would always make sure I had a lot of work with me. I'd have my laptop. I'd have my phones going. I'd be doing payroll because I wasn't interested in sitting in that shop right, right. <laughs> and listening to all mm -hmm. the Hollywood gossip. And so I would bring work with me and I would just never talk to her and one day I ran out of the office really quickly and I didn't have time to do that and so I had to talk 
and we were sitting and she's washing my hair and I'm in the bowl and and she says you know it's really amazing that you are where you are at your age and she says with what you're doing in business I can't imagine where you'll be 10 15 years from now and I said you know interesting thing is is I love this but what I really really truly want to be is a great mom and an excellent wife and so she's looking down, washing my <laughs> hair. She's like, you need to meet my son. Wow. <laughs> Which is not, by the way, what you want to hear. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> when you are getting here. And it is, and you know, when you, look at, when you look at women that are strong and that are successful, rarely will you hear them say, I want to be an excellent mom and I want to be an excellent That's wife. True. Because we look down upon that, whether intentional or not, we automatically assume, okay, that means that she just wants to be weak or she just wants to be taken care of why can't I want to take care of him I mean it, you know it doesn't right. so so yeah it was it was definitely a conversation I'm sure she had never had before. <laughs> so is that one of the premises of the, the happy wives club to reclaim what being a great wife and a happy wife and, and a really wonderful marriage is all about you know I think it's just a matter of spotlighting what marriage can be and what it should be so it's just showing that positive side of it because every day we're bombarded I mean at this point how many real housewives can we have I mean, yeah. we're going to run out of cities before we run out of those shows and so at some point we have to look at it and say okay let's show another side of what marriage is and what it can be and what it should be so that's all that it was meant to be so take us through the process because I understand what you're saying when you're you know finding people who are happily married you know the ball and chain my personal experience has always been, yeah, that's my wife, yeah, that's my yeah. husband. Yeah, yeah, you know, he gets <laughs> on my nerves. There's never anything that we can say positive about our significant mm -hmm. other. Yeah. So take us through the process of how you found the happy wives. Well, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that when you start looking for them, they're not hard to find. Really? Mm. Absolutely not. And I always tell couples or women when I talk to them and they say, well, I never meet anyone that's happily married. Like, how do I find them? I said, just set an intention. They'll come to you. That's very so interesting. So when you look for a man, they say you don't look for a man. You do not look for a man. But you look for a happy wife? Right. <laughs> <laughs> The happy wife is the wife that didn't look for the man. Ah, okay, here we go. <laughs> there's the key. There's the key. There's the key. It, was, it, it is all about being in love with who you are before you fall in love with that person that you're going to be with for the rest of your life. And I think that's a part of why so many relationships don't work and why so many marriages don't work is because people going into them are looking for something to complete them. That's, you know, the whole Jerry Maguire, you complete me. No, no, you need to be complete <laughs> yep. before right. you find that person and they enhance your life. They do not complete it. And I think a lot of women, especially is, you know, I want to piggyback off of what you said, which is so true, but we don't don't know how to complete ourselves yeah and we don't know that we even need to complete ourselves before we can get married yeah. so we just automatically out of habit and what mm -hmm. we're taught is to go oh there's this great guy there's this great you know man in my life and now I'm complete when mm -hmm. actually it's the it's him right. but it's not really you yeah and that's what transitioned to having a great marriage yeah and and being happily married yeah. which is something that I'm just so excited about because I'm looking for <laughs> happily married people too because I want an example I want an example yeah you yeah. don't find them often yeah well when you when you start looking for them so I'll tell you you how I found them going back to to yeah. your earlier point all I did was start a Facebook page and and I and I sent out an email to five of my closest girlfriends and I sent them this site that I had created using a template took a few hours and all it had on the site was an about us which was we're happily married if you are happily married if you do not resonate with any of the shows you see on television that portray wives then join the club so that we can show that happy women in marriage do exist and I sent that link out to five of my girlfriends maybe three o'clock in the morning they all lived within a 20 mile radius of me and within four weeks we were in 22 countries Wow. And at that point, it was main, I would say that 90% of the people that joined were through email because Facebook wasn't what it is now. Mm -hmm. But at that point, it was just people going, sending an email and saying, hey, I'm sending this to my seven closest girlfriends who I know are happily married. And then they would just join the club. And what else were they saying? Were they saying, 
I'm happily, I've been married 15 years, two yeah. years, three years, and yeah. we're happily married because of X, Y, and Z. I mean, it was yeah. just kind of this, they were inundating you with emails yeah. as almost to say, I'm so happy I found someone else. They were inundating me with emails to say, I'm so happy that someone else has said that happily, mar happily married couples exist. And I still get those emails every single day. We're now close to a million members. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare for a day to go by where I don't receive several that say, thank you for this club. I was starting to think I was the only one. Wow. I love it. I mean, we're over here in shock. I'm like, <laughs> we're like, I'm wow. like, like wow. this exists? Yeah, this, this exists. Exist. 22 countries, a million members, everyone saying I'm happily married. Well, we're now in 110 countries. 110 it's countries. 110 countries now. And for instance, for the Happy Wives Club book, the way that I found the couples that I went to interview mm -hmm. around the world is I would reach out to people that I knew in other countries. And I'd say, point me to the couples that everyone in the community, everyone in their own household, everyone in their family would say, if we want to emulate any married couple, it's that one. Point me to that person. And I need you to have been watching them for at least the last 25 years. Oh, so you really gave them details. It wasn't as if just like, oh yeah, I'm happy mm -hmm. today. Not oh, happy no. tomorrow. No, 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 no. Okay. This is, you've been watching them for 25 years. They're genuine. They are the real deal. There is no front here. Mm -hmm. This is for real, for real. This is who you want your marriage to be like. And then I got on a plane and I interviewed them. And I did that in six, <clears throat> six continents and 12 countries. And it was a fascinating thing because to sit down with a couple that's happily married, it's like literally turning on the spigot. I mean, just, just they want to be asked the question. They want people like you to seek them out because they've been holding on to this information for so long. Right. And they just want someone to ask. And, but they don't want to ever sound braggadocious. They don't ever want to sound as though they're boasting. So they just kind of remain to themselves and... You know, I find that interesting because I've been to so many weddings and one of the things that a lot of the, you know, bride and groom always ask mm -hmm. is what's the secret to happy marriage? Yeah. They always ask, you know, how do you stay happy? How do you avoid fights? Right. Always, but the answer is always superficial. Mm. Don't go to bed angry. Mm -hmm. Put God first. Mm -hmm. Not that that's a bad thing. You know, I just <laughs> right. want to clarify that. But it's, right. it's, it's not concrete. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's you want not, more detail. Like, yes, how do you do that? Yes, right. it's not, I mean, well, yes, put God first mm -hmm. is tangible. But yeah. it doesn't go into the depths of really what matters makes two people who are together yeah. all the time mm -hmm. happy and and is put god first really tangible right so i i remember writing a blog post on this a couple years ago because i would get the same thing where people would post things i mean if you go into the happy wives club the facebook community there are thousands of women on there talking every single morning right. every single afternoon every single evening and so i would see these comments and women would always post to other women <laughs> just put god first just put god first so i finally said what exactly does that mean right does that mean that you respect your spouse more does that mean that you are more kind does that mean you are more patient does that mean you are more gentle so is it really exhibiting the fruits of that spirit or is it I mean what does that look like and it was a challenging post for people mm -hmm. they're not yes. accustomed to people pushing back on that yes and so yes it is put God first but you need to identify what that actually means absolutely because I've been married and I'm divorced and everyone told me that yeah so now that I'm in the thick of it mm -hmm. and we're arguing and I'm like well how are you just gonna pull money out of the account and not talk to me about it how, how are you gonna do that yeah where's God in that where, where's God? <laughs> right because yeah. now, now you're like MFs and yeah you yeah. know you you yeah. your, your asses and all yeah, this right. other stuff because it's like when, when did you decide to do that yeah. but it's about how do you put God first in that yeah how do you even think about putting God first before you open up your mouth and talk because you're 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 acting on anger, you're acting on emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's and something that I had to learn. And through the whole process of me getting engaged, getting married, mm -hmm. being married, and going through a divorce, and what I learned at my bridal shower is completely yeah. different. Whenever people ask me, what is the number one piece of advice you would give to newlyweds? I tell them, don't listen to any of the advice anyone gives you while you're a newlywed. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, right. absolutely that, nothing. Here's the thing is most people, if you think about it, most people have gone through really difficult, I mean, at least 50%, right? That have gotten married, have gone through some really challenging times, have gone through divorce, have mm -hmm. gone. And so, so many that are giving advice are coming from a place of really not knowing how to create a great marriage 
if they're still in the marriage, a lot of them are just giving advice on how to make marriage work, Mm -hmm. not how to make marriage great. Mm -hmm. So when I began seeking out different couples to interview, I would always say, I don't want to know how to make marriage work. I want to know how you made it great. And that's the difference. So when you go to to these weddings and people give advice, they're usually giving advice on how do you make a marriage work? Mm Or better right. yet, how do you make a marriage not end in divorce? Right. 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 But right. what we're looking for is, is how do you make a marriage great? How do you make it so that you really enjoy your time together? So we've now been married 12 years, and, or it'll be 12 years later this year, and there has never, ever been a day that I wasn't so excited to go home and see him there. There's never been a day where he's called me on the phone and I wasn't absolutely ecstatic to hear his voice on the other end. And that's something that, I mean, you have to be intentional about that. You have to be intentional about every single day making your relationship great and not allowing things to build, but dealing with them right when it happens. You need a t-shirt that says like, you gotta be intentional about that. You do. It's like a constant reminder. I think think that's, you you get up every day and you make that decision. It's a choice to be intentional about it, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a very powerful statement you made. I had like chills there for a second. (laughs) We single girls are like, ooh, that makes sense. We have to write that down. I just have to ask you, of the the couples that you interviewed, What were their characteristics? Well, I'm sure that you were in six different continents, different countries, were any of the couples were there arranged marriages? Did everyone, I did interview one that was an arranged because marriage. Because everyone, we have these images, especially in the States, of yeah. arranged marriages. Yes. And we find a lot of arranged marriages, they stay together for years. Yes. But you're always wondering, just like in every marriage, what really happens when the doors are closed? Yeah. So to meet couples of arranged marriage, people who chose to be together, different countries, yeah. different views about marriage, yeah. did you come up with common threads that you know everyone said the same thing what was mm-hmm. the most common thing that all these couples said there were actually 12 of them and the the thing that they would say usually first when i would ask what is that one takeaway if i only shared one secret what would you say it was and across the board it was always mutual respect mm-hmm. so we hear a lot of men need respect women need love mm-hmm. no no women need respect too <laughs> And I think that that's a piece that we miss, especially in our community. Mm -hmm. We miss that a lot, but it was mutual respect, it coming both ways. And for every couple that I interviewed, they were very similar to my husband and me, where there's no one in this world I respect more than him. No one. If Barack calls or if my husband calls, Barack's on hold. It just is. That is is a good point. Take care of home first. You take care of home first. First and vice versa. There's no one that he respects more than me. So if something is going on in his day, I'm the first phone call. So that it it needs to swing both ways. And that was the number one thing. The second thing that came up a lot is there has to be this level of trust that nothing can penetrate. And so those two things were usually the ones that came up first. The one that I loved the most was something that we weren't doing, is every couple that had been happily married at least 25 years or more, they all had daily rituals. Together. Every, today, every single one. So in, in South Africa, for instance, there was a couple every morning, they woke up and they had their what they called their board meeting. He would go downstairs, get two cups of coffee, she'd open up all the windows, and they would watch all the city lights come on around Cape Town. They'd get back in the bed, just sit, and talk while drinking their cup of coffee for 45 minutes or whatever that time period is. They woke up before sunrise so that they could do this every single day. And then you talk about whatever is on your agenda for that day. You talk about whatever was not talked about the day before, but it builds a level of trust because every single day you're looking eye to eye and you're talking about what's going on in your life. So you can't really let things build when you have a daily ritual, right? So one of the things I think that we do wrong is we tell couples to have a weekly date night. Right. Well, that's great. Except if things built for six days, <laughs> that That's a seventh lot. day isn't going to help too much. Right. right. And so having something every day, another an Israeli couple for 30 years or so, every single night before dinner, they'd have port and appetizers every night for an hour. So the kids, when they were growing up, they knew, OK, dinner is at six. We're not invited to what mom and dad are doing at five o'clock. And then there are other, others that they put the kids down at eight o'clock and it's just their time to you know go outside or to sit on the couch or whatever. But there is a daily ritual that you are talking about what's going on in your day and you're talking about what's going on in your head every single day. And is that, was that a point that couples with, with kids had to say there's 
you know, parent and family time. Yes. And there's, then there's parent time. And then, yes. Because I hear so many couples who have kids and they're all like, as soon as we have kids, everything changes. Yeah. There's no time for he or I. You know, we don't have any time alone. Yeah. She's with the kids all the time. I don't get her attention. So everyone made a point of saying these happy couples. You have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. You have to put your marriage first because every bit of research has shown if the parents are okay, the kids will be better. If the parents, if you know, if the kids know mom and dad are going to be together, we are going to remain a happy home. They're not concerned if you spend an hour by yourself. Put those kids to bed. I mean, just no, the, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I wanted to ask you because you're making such good points, and there's and because I've lived through it, yeah. And I'm like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But there's one problem. What? It's the guy. <laughs> Well, then let me tell you. Because, wait, 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 wait. Listen, because, because, as, because as, men, as your husband and right, the engineer right, both look at us, engineer. the only two men in the room are right. like, say what? Because for one, well, it, this, this is my situation and a lot of my friend's situation. The guy doesn't want to talk, right? Then they don't want to share. They don't want to open up their because they're not raised to do that. So it's hard for them to go, oh, okay, let's talk about your day. Let's share. Because, you know, I can talk all day and be like, yes, girl, blah, oh, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Guys be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, yeah. If right. you get it, uh-huh, uh-huh, right. uh-huh. Or, <laughs> right, and the fact that, you know, they're just not the type to open up to, you know, with their feelings and now, who, just share. Who is they? You're referring men. to men overall? Men over, well, not all men. I don't want to say all yeah, men. Yeah, let's not but say everybody. The majority. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how do you speak to your husband or your boyfriend if you're dating to get them to open up, to get them to share, to get them to do the ritual every day? Well, there's, there's a couple things. Number one, men who trust, open up. So if they do not feel like they are fully if they do not feel safe hmm. to be able to share with you and to know it won't come back to them in a later conversation, because we can hold on to oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, right up in yes. here. So right, they yeah. have to know that they are completely safe. They have to know that they will not be judged. They have to know that they have your unconditional support. And a lot of us, we're fixers, right? Right. You want to share, we want to fix. Well, men don't want to be fixed. So if they know that you will just listen, they will talk. Men who men who trust open up. They open That's up. the second T-shirt. I'm writing. <laughs> okay. We're gonna put a men whole trust, line together. It's gonna men be a whole trust, line. I mean, and the I, trust is based on the fact that you're not gonna use that as ammunition later mm -hmm. on in an argument or mm -hmm. a fight or to get back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And it and it's I mean across the board any couple that I have ever interviewed, the men never talk as much as the women. But when the men talk, the women usually they just fall back and listen, right? right? They they have they have they have mastered the art of listening. Mm -hmm. And for women, we just have to be careful because when we get together as girlfriends, it's it's like a volleying. We're talking over each other. It's back and forth, it's back and forth. That's not how men roll. It is they talk, pause. <laughs> talk pause so you almost have to learn to to talk and to listen the way that they do and then it becomes more of a natural flow you you become one of the guys I mean, okay that, that totally okay. makes sense i'm writing down notes don't even <laughs> <laughs> i have a question about you find this great guy yeah and I'm Southern, so of course I was raised to. I don't know how to cook, so I'm just gonna put it out there. But anyway, <laughs> listen, I, I was cook, raised. So there you go. So I was good. raised to take care of my man, which I totally believe in. But the hard thing that I find, and I find with so many of my friends, is that you find this great guy, and like you said, we as women are nurturers. We want to fix. We want to make sure everyone make sure everyone's okay. We lose ourselves absolutely, and then we wake up one day. He might be happy, and you're like, who am I? What happened to what I wanted to do? And you're now unhappy in this relationship. Absolutely. How do you not lose yourself? Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things, because you, you touched on a few things. Number one, I have a sous chef named TJ. Go to him all the time. And I hear that. Time. All the time. Because we can't do everything. Mm -hmm. If you don't love cooking, don't cook do not try to turn yourself into june cleaver we're, we're beyond that and so you play to whatever your strength was when your husband met you when he fell in love with you who were you at that moment mm -hmm. if you begin to change and he doesn't know who it is that you are anymore 
he's going to drift because that's not who he fell in love with. So we have this idea that once we get married, we need to be the one that cooks, we need to be the one that cleans, we need to be the one that does all these things. And for a lot of women, you lose your ambition, you lose your drive. I've seen it. And it, it, and it doesn't help anyone because your spouse fell in love with who you were. So why would you change that? Well, mine's didn't. <laughs> Here because I need the other side of this. The man is taking money without request. He is he is not listening. He does not I talk. Want to, I want to explain myself because I was the one that didn't cook. Okay. Right? And he was okay with it. He was okay with, you know, like, okay. you know what, babe? I cook. It's cool. Okay. All right, cool. So we got that underway. Got that okay. We got it down. His schedule changed. Mm hmm to the point where he was coming home at 11.30 at night. Now, I'm on the couch chilling <laughs> because I don't cook. <laughs> right? and, and you covered that already. Right, and he's like, you're not even gonna make me a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just something to help a brother out? So my lesson, and that my lesson is to everyone talking out there, even though he fell in love with you and you did not cook, it's okay to step the game up, right? Oh, and to take Because it, I didn't step my game up. It absolutely <laughs> is. And I, when I say chilling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> at 11.30 at night, he was coming home from work. Yes. And you didn't do it. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> you, were, you were trying really hard. Like, oh, that's, it's okay, baby. Let me, let me help soothe it up a little bit. But, but here's the thing, that doesn't have anything to do with your role as, as a wife. But so if you were the one coming home and he was ch at, at 11.30 at night right. from a day at work, y you would feel the exact same way. That, so that doesn't have anything to do with gender roles. That just has to do with treating your spouse the way that you want to be treated. But I, so I, I put everything in a, in a box. <laughs> I put, oh, okay, he just knows that already about oh, no. me, right? Oh, no. So, but that's the lesson that I had to learn. <laughs> As we move on through life, we evolve, <laughs> we our learn schedules the schedules change, okay. we, when our spouse is working until 11.30 p.m. Yes. and hasn't eaten, we should probably have, you know, <laughs> so I'm going to write that note down yes. to Ashita. Yes. Do not chill. Do not chill. I mean, I, when I say chill, and I'm, oh, I'm talking about hair wrapped and everything, <laughs> I'm just on the couch. Oh. Like, Oh. So yeah, so I yeah. but my mind, I was so used to being that person yeah. that I didn't think anything was wrong. Yeah. Until it was wrong. Yeah. So that's another lesson to learn too when you're married, when there's an issue, when there's something that's wrong and you're like, Oh, well you know what, let me adjust. Yeah. It's okay to adjust. Right. So that's yeah. that's the point that I wanted to make. Well, you know? and you know, when we were talking earlier about the daily rituals, mm -hmm. this is where those conversations come in at. Because before you got to a place where you you were doing this on a regular basis, right? <laughs> you would have gotten together and had your morning board meeting or whatever, and he would have said, "You know, babe, I came home at eleven thirty <laughs> right. at night. Was there a reason that you were just on the couch chilling? Like, and it, and you guys would have had that conversation and made the adjustment." So those who are happily married for decades and decades, they adjust and they adjust quickly. This is not like yes. a slow Titanic kind of right. let's when something in life changes, you just roll with it. You just, as a teen, you but just roll with it. As I'm going to say, as a teen, you're rolling together. Yeah. I, I love I, it. I have to have you back. I we love have, it. We have to have you because <laughs> like we're part getting two we're, and yes, three. We're going to have part two. We, got, we have to have you back, too. Right. Yes. So I'm just, I'm loving it. But I had, <laughs> I, to, I had to tell my story. I just had to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it was it. hilarious. And right? next time, I want your ex here. <laughs> right. Yes. So we can just get to the bottom of what That's really, I will scoot out. really happened. Have your husband come up and the four of you will just hash it out. We should do it. Yes. We should do it. That's my suggestion. Thank you so much for being with us on Phenomenal Woman. I'm your host, Ashita Andre. Tara. Oh, I'm Tara Johnson. And thank you, Fawn, thank for being you. with us today and enlightening us <laughs> and sharing all these amazing tools that we can put together to have amazing marriages. We'll see you next week. Bye. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.